again uh, welcome to all of you and uh, this webinar is on uh, overview of material design construction practices for uh, bitmaps payment in india and uh, we are collaborating with uh, professor uh, sarif from uh, mansoora university and hopefully this kind of series series of webinar is is going to go in the future also yeah bro next yeah so uh, some general instructions i would like to give you uh, uh, about this uh, webinar and how we are going to go so that you understand uh, the kind of uh, house cooking rules uh, all of, all the participants are muted uh, their video is also turned off their audio is also turned off uh, it is just to maintain some kind of discipline uh, in this particular webinar because we are going to spend almost uh, 2.5 to 3 hours in this and uh, since we have the limited seats in that we have also uh, doing the youtube stream streaming you may also pass on this particular information to somebody who is not able to join and uh, you can also uh, put up your questions in the chat box and we will try to answer the question so please uh, use that particular options to uh, raise your questions and we'll get back to you on that yeah but next so let me just clarify you know like the expectations uh, we have uh, received almost uh, 1300 uh, registration for this webinar and in fact we were not hoping that it is going to go that much initially we were thinking in fact myself and professor sarif we were thinking it is going to be maybe 50 or 100 but when we opened it up uh, we realized that uh, it's almost uh, 1200 plus participants those who have registered for it and uh, i would like to clarify that purpose of this presentation is to give the basic overview of the payment materials payment design practices and technological advancement for the construction of the bitmaps payment in india you, we are not going to go a lot of in detail about the materials and lot of kind of payment design concepts and all because this itself is a big topic this is just i would like to clarify so that you understand that what level of the details we are going to go in that but i hope i think uh, uh, this particular uh, summary this particular presentation is going to give lot of ideas that okay these are the basic because we have the people from different countries also next slide bro so uh, since we have a large number of participants uh, it is quite possible we may not be able to answer all the questions uh but you can uh, drop your questions to me uh, you can email me if you have some technical questions related to the whatever we are presenting here and we'll be happy to answer answer that so please keep that in mind because we have the limited time also yeah next so let me introduce uh, today's presentation uh, speakers and if you see uh, the speakers are blend of uh, uh, you know like the postdocs we have we have a senior research uh, phd student also and uh, myself is there we have moderator dr parbin who was also you know like graduated from iit bombay we have dr bharat who is doing postdoctoral here we have uh, mr burhan who is phd scholar in iit bombay arpita she is also doing phd at iit bombay we have vamsi krishna he is also doing phd at iit bombay these are the speakers and moderator that we are going to see actually during this particular presentation next so uh, just give you uh, the basic idea about the iit bombay since this is uh, uh, you no know, like this information is not available to all uh, iit bombay was established in 1958 and uh, it is institute of eminence and it is a full residential campus we have we have uh, accommodation for the faculty for the students and we have different kind of uh, facility inside the campus itself for the students and the faculty and students next so particularly department of civil engineering it was established in 1958 the time iit bombay was established and we have ug programs four years of ug program we have pg specializations and if you see here we have seven pg specialization in the department of civil engineering 
we have structural engineering water resources engineering we have geotechnical engineering we have remote sensing we have ocean engineering we have transportation system engineering and we have construction technology and management also we have 48 faculty member as of now and 20 staff 27 staff which is uh, those who are working in the department of civil engineering at it bombay next so uh, let me just give you the overview of the presentation uh, the outline this is how we are going to go so that you know that what is the flow going to be uh, we have basically five different parts of the presentation part number 1 part number 2 part number 3 once we complete part number 1 2 and 3 we are going to have 10 minutes break then we are going to have part number 4 and part number 5 after that we can have the question answer sessions and we are going to collect the questions from the youtube whoever is is, is uh, watching there and also from here and i also welcome the people those who are watching on the youtube and thank you very much for joining us in the youtube also and also in ms team and uh, presentation one is going to be uh, delivered by dr bharat presentation two is going to be delivered by arpita then presentation three which is a part three uh, by Vamsi krishna part four by dr bharat rajan again part five is going to be delivered by mr burhan so this is how we are going to go so that you understand that what kind of flow we are going to maintain in this particular presentation next yeah so now i would like to uh, uh, request uh, 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 dr parbeen who is a currently postdoctoral fellow in uh, Hong Kong Polytechnical University. And he is our moderator today for this uh, uh, whole presentation and question answer session. So welcome, Prabhupada. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Singh and also Professor Sharif for organizing this webinar and uh, giving me the opportunity to moderate this, uh, uh, this uh, webinar session. So, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, thank the uh, organizing committee and also the uh, audience over here, who, whoever has joined across the globe for listening to this uh, webinar. So good evening to all. Uh, I am Prabhupada Kumar Ashish and I will be moderating the today's webinar. So uh, without further ado, we will start the session. Uh, please note that audio of the audience is off and please put up your queries in the chat box wherever you feel and before starting i will first first i will do uh, i will introduce the speakers to the audience so today uh, as mentioned by professor singh uh, we have total four speakers who will be covering total five sessions so the speaker for our first session is dr Bharat rajan uh, dr rajan will be uh, today giving the overview on the road infrastructure status in India in his first session. Uh, Dr. Rajin actually is presently working as a postdoctoral research fellow at Department of Civil Engineering at Bombay. Uh, he completed his PhD in uh, 2020 from IIT Bombay itself under the uh, supervision of Professor Singh. And he completed his master's in 2014 from IIT Guwahati uh, in the field of transportation engineering. Uh, Dr. Rajan's research area covers fundamental and advanced characterization of different pavement materials and uh, application of digital image techniques for aggregate safe characterization, aggregate production mechanism and application of sustainable materials and practices in payment systems. So uh, without further ado, I will hand over the floor to Dr. Rajan. Over to you, Dr. Rajan. Please start your first session. Yeah. So thank you, Dr. Parvin, for this uh, nice introduction. And uh, I'm here to present my like first session, introduction and overview of Indian node road network and developments. So let's look. So let's look into the basic statistics on road network in India. So in India, like we are the like second largest road network in the world behind United States. 6.8 million kilometer and then people republic of china ahead of people republic of china around 5 million kilometers so if you see the uh, typical classage of uh, the uh, pavements we have we have expressway which is the kind of highest class of highway 
and which is like a controlled access so no lateral entries are provided very frequently so definitely there is a higher design speed we are keeping around 120 kmph it's equivalent to 75 75 miles per hour then we have the national highway so national highway is the kind of second class where we are keeping around 100 kmph as a uh, design speed is equivalent to around 62 miles per hour and national highway connects the major ports major cities state capitals in india then we have the state highway which are more or less kind of confined in the states and provide the connectiv connectivity in the major parts of the states or major cities in the states then we have a district roads so which again provide the major uh, connectivity of the major cities in a district and the last we have village roads which provide the all weather road connectivity to the villages to nearest state highway district road national highway whatever it is there so in design part uh, we have like almost expressway national highway and state highway like similar standards are there and district roads and village roads we have little bit different standards based on the design traffic and if you see the statistic expressway we are on the just embarking on the journey of expressway as of now we have 1650 kilometers of expressway but uh, government of india has a very ambitious plan in near future to add 7000 kilometer of expressway by 2025 and national highway we have around 0.15 million kilometer national highway state highway 0.175 million kilometers and major chunk is taken care by the other roads which includes this district roads and village roads so if you see this national highway statistics maybe 0.15 kilometer but uh, it may be 2.5 percent of the total road network length but 40 percent of road traffic is carried by the, these national highways so one can imagine how important national highways are for our indian economy and at present we are building national highway with 36.4 kilometer a day which is a quite very good number and in future we are targeting 40 kilometer per day so let's see with such a kind of great length of road network what kind of agencies are there with us to construct as well as manage our uh, highways or the roads so we have three different tiers national level then state governments then major cities so at national level we have a dedicated ministry which is called as a ministry of road transport and highways and what are the agencies we have national highway authority of india then nhidcl then pmgsy pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana which is dedicatedly look for the rural roads and then we have border road organizations which dedicatedly look for the border roads then at state levels each state have its highway or road development authority and at the major cities we have municipal corporations as well as the local governing bodies are there so like in mumbai we have municipal corporation of greater mumbai which is called as a mcgm likewise in other cities also we have this kind of bodies who manage the like kind of urban roads and all and what kind of guidelines standards we follow for road construction work so one is the primary guideline is we use called as a morth or orange books very famously known in india is orange book and its color is orange and if you go in the field and ask anyone sometimes they may not recognize with morth but if you say orange book they will quickly uh, get it and then we have the two bodies indian road congress and then bureau of indian standards so they publish guidelines so if you see this indian road congress let's say this will be in the this format they have uh, Indian Road Congress, specification number, and then year. Likewise, Indian Road Cong Congress, special editions, and then number and year. If you see here, this is like kind of typical number, IRC 37, 2018. Likewise, throughout the presentation, you will see number of ports. So they are named as, as for the IRC, likewise IS. 
and what typical climatic conditions we have in India. So India is the kind of uh, we have a broad range of plains and uh, here climatic conditions changes. So if you see here topmost in the northern part, northern ends, you can see the temperature variation is from 20 degree to minus 15 degree and rainfall is very low rainfall 100 mm per year. When it comes to the desert side or the third desert, the temperature variations are 48 degree to 10 degree Celsius. Temperature is very high, but rainfall is equivalent to the top one. And when it comes to the eastern sides, we have temperature variation 35 to 12, but rainfall is, you can see this is very huge rainfall is there. And then when it comes to the kind of southern side, we have heavy temperature and then the kind of moderate uh, rainfall. So all this temperature, climatic conditions, variations, we cannot adopt the same uh, kind of uniform type of mixage, construction practice. So we, this will help us to select the pavement, type of pavement, materials, structure, and construction. Let's see what are the legal axle load limits in India. So this is important from the design aspect of pavement. When we go for the design, definitely we have to consider what kind of traffic is flying on our roads. So we have a steering axle with 60 kN. Likewise, we have dual axle with 130 kN or 13 ton. Then we have a tandem axle with 225 kN. And then we have a trident axle with the 300 kN or 30 ton. And for the design, we consider a standard axle. So all these different axle we have to convert in the standard axle. So what is our Indian standard axle? It is 80 kN or 8, 8 ton we consider as a standard axle. Like in France and all, they have like 100 kN. And if you see this, what kind of uh, money or the kind of funding we are pumping in our highway sector, so if you see this budget allocation and budget allocations to highways is increasing. And from 2015-16 onwards, we are sharply increasing our fundings. It little bit got down, but again, we are increasing. And considering this government of India, future plans for infrastructure sector, definitely it will rise very sharply in the near future. And what are the few national level projects? I would mention few national pro level projects we are working on right now. So most of the projects are come under this Bharat Mala, very ambitious project by federal government of India. We are going to build around 35,000 kilometers of roads, national highway and expressways. And if you see what it include, it will include economic corridors. It will include uh, interconnectivity feeder roads, national corridors, then borders and international connectivity roads. We will include postal and port connectivity roads, then expressways. So here you can see some expressways which we are planned to complete by 23-24. So these are the some connecting the major city, connecting some major ports and all. And here you can see Bharat Mala is like a Bharat Garland kind of thing. So we are putting a one garland all throughout the Indian territory so to provide the connectivity, connectivity along the border as well as the inside one. So this is the kind of, uh, this throughout presentation, you can see in what are the kind of, how government of India is uh, embarking on ambitious journey of national highway and infrastructure development in India. That's all from the first session. And if you have any question, you can put it in the chat box. We will take it at the end of the all session. And with this, I will end my session and uh, like over to you, Dr. Parvin. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajan, for providing uh, our view on road infrastructure status. Uh, you also.